to Britain. And this is where news of Liz Truss's resignation made headlines and has prompted quick reaction from political leaders and media commentators around the world. Among foreign politicians, France's president Emmanuel Macron said that on a personal level he was always sad to see a colleague go but that the most important thing was for Britain to find stability. When White House reporters asked U.S. President Joe Biden if Ms. Truss had made the right decision, he replied it was her decision to make, adding that he wouldn't weigh in on her judgment. Dmitry Kuleba, the foreign minister of Ukraine, said Ms. Truss's exit had been dramatic but voiced his confidence that British support for Kyiv would not drop. The Ukrainian government was reported uh, in the, the press to have tweeted and then deleted a post reading Better Call Boris uh, in an apparent endorsement of any bid by the former Prime Minister to win back Tory leadership. Well, there was little sympathy for mistrust from Russia. Its foreign ministry spokeswoman said the UK had never known such a disgrace of a Prime Minister. In Europe, the Irish Times pulled no punches in describing a low moment in history of British politics. Well, on the next Prime Minister, you might want to tick off British Defence Minister Ben Wallace, who has said he would not stand in the contest to replace Liz Truss as Prime Minister and was leaning towards backing former leader Boris Johnson. After Truss quits Thursday, ending her six weeks in par, those who want to replace her are trying to find the 100 votes from Conservative lawmakers needed to run in a contest, which the party hopes will reset its ailing fortunes. Mr Wallace is one of the few ministers to have emerged from recent political turmoil with his credibility in hands. He is uh, popular with party members and was one of the bookmakers' favourites. Uh, Truss's predecessor, Boris Johnson, his former finance minister, Rishi Sunak, are the leading, uh, the potential contenders, although neither have formally declared their candidacy yet. Last time I said I wouldn't stand, it was not something that I was prepared to do. I think you really have to want it as a Prime Minister uh, to do that job. You have to really, really think it, it's the job for you. For me, I feel that I can add the best value in keeping people safe at Defence by being the Defence Secretary. It's the job uh, that I have been doing and it's the job I intend to stay doing. So I'm not going to be standing for Prime Minister this time and the same reasons really apply as last time. Without uh, you know, national security, there is no economic security, and I think that is important. Are the candidates putting their names forward? They indicate that. But also at the same time, I have to recognise the issue of the mandate. This will be our, potentially our third Prime Minister since the general election of 2019. That means we have to think about that legitim legitimacy question that the public will be asking themselves, and also about who could win the next election. That's obviously important for any political party at the time. So, you know, at the moment, I would lean towards Boris Johnson. I think he will still have some questions to answer around, obviously, that investigation. Well, I think the Tory party has to settle down and get on with delivering its mandate that it was elected on in 2019 with a massive majority, which is to govern uh, on behalf of the citizens of this country. And I think that means tackling the economic challenges we face, tackling the threats uh, globally that we face, uh, and I make sure that's the real number one priority for us all. Uh, of course, unity is also important. You know, I'll be looking for how the candidates are prepared to bring the party together, because without unity, we can't govern either. Well, Liz Truss will now be able to claim the £115,000 a year she's entitled to after resigning as Prime Minister. All former Prime Ministers are entitled to the allowance, which they can use for any costs that arise as a result of public duties. But the Labour leader said she has not earned the right to the entitlement, and the Lib Dems say she shouldn't claim the money. The public duty cost allowance was set up by former Tory Prime Minister John Major in March 1991 in the wake of Margaret. Margaret Thatcher's uh, resignation. It was introduced to assist former prime ministers still activate in private life, uh, rather still active in private life, paying for things like office costs or travel uh, to events where they're appearing as ex-prime minister. The current limit on what they are able to draw is set at £115,000 and has been frozen since 2011. 
Well, let's go back to the summit in Brussels where EU leaders said that they hoped for a political stability in Britain as the country scrambles to replace short-lived Premier Liz Trust. Now, asked about the race to replace Ms. Trust, most leaders arriving uh, at the uh, Brussels summit did not express a preference for any candidate but said they hoped for calm. Estonian Prime Minister Kaja Kallis said she of, uh, had a good Trust. working relationship oh. with Mr. Johnson, who was uh, Prime Minister when Britain finally left the EU after several years of tortuous negotiations and said that, you know, we're very sad to see the UK struggling with the issues and that they will be missed in the European Union. It's the fact that uh, stability is really needed in the UK, especially now in this crisis uh, time. We saw already the shock uh, for the economy the last uh, days and weeks uh, because of some uh, directions who were uh, not supported by the financial uh, uh, sector in, in the UK. So uh, I hope that they will soon have a prime minister who's able to get a strong majority also behind him and uh, a stable government for more than one and a half months. So I have had very good relations with Boris Johnson, but also Liz Truss, so uh, we are very sad to see um, the UK struggling uh, with, uh, with the issues, and, and we miss them in, in the European Union. So It's always better to have a, a, a prime minister that has a future in, in front of his or her, um, and, and we'll follow this in detail. The uh, United Kingdom is, is, is a neighbor of us. It's a partner in so many domains, and it will remain a partner in so many domains. So we hope to have soon a person who, uh, who can, we can discuss so many topics with. Now let's hear from the leader of the opposition Labour Party, Sir Keir Starmer, who renewed calls for general elections following Liz Truss's resignation and former Prime Minister Boris Johnson becoming possible contender for the job. While speaking to reporters, he said the country cannot have another experiment at the top of the Tory party. Look, we've got to get away from this idea that there's a sort of revolving door of chaos and that we just get the next experiment at the top of the Tory party. What matters is what happens to this country. And there's the contrast. More of this chaos or stability under a Labour government. And it's very important, I think, that everybody watching this appreciates we don't have to go on like this. We can have stability. We can have an economy that works for working people. That's why we need a general election. Give people a choice. Do you want to continue with this chaos, which is damaging the economy, or wouldn't you prefer a Labour government and the stability that that will bring for our country? I remind uh, myself that only three months ago, Boris Johnson left office because most of those who were serving him on his front bench had declared that he was unfit for office. So to go from the kamikaze budget under Liz Truss back to a man that his own party has declared is unfit for office is the most powerful argument you could possibly have for a general election so that we can put the alternative case to the country, which is stability, growth, an economy that works for everyone rather than this chaos. Well, for citizens, it appears that people in London are split on whether the UK should call for a national election after Prime Minister Liz Truss was forced to resign on Thursday. Let's listen to them. It's difficult. I don't think there's a way out of this. A general election causes more uncertainty. A lack of general election is, um, is thoroughly undemocratic. It's, um, it's a difficult choice. I like the sounds of Richie personally, but um, he's, been, he's, he's proven that he can do the job in, in the parliament, it's not necessarily as PM, but in other parts of the business. So, Boris coming back, I don't know if, if it's wise going back to that right now. It's a shambles. The Conservative Party have had 12 years uh, and they've done nothing but catastrophe after catastrophe. So um, the fact that they think that people will accept a third Prime Minister in two months is just not on. Um, I think that's enough for the time being. We need a bit more stability. General election would add to the turmoil, I think. Um, obviously, there's a promise that the Labour Party would possibly win or come into power on the back of this, but uh, I, I would like to think, see things done more orderly rather than in the time of panic having an election. Maybe wait another year, then have an election if, if need be. But uh... He's proven to be a liar and a cheat with a moral vacuum, so the audacity of the man to try and even attempt to do that is uncontemptible. 
Dr. Charles Aholo is a lawyer, a law lecturer at Nottingham Law School, uh, Nottingham. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you, Melissa. Been interesting the comments so far and the political, some would call it turmoil, we're seeing um, in Britain. Uh, but first, what did you make of Liz Truss's announcement yesterday? Was it this something that you expected? Well, it didn't come to political pundits um, as a surprise. Um, most of the, her colleagues at the, the House of Commons have been calling for her to quit her position as Prime Minister. Um, I have been following. Uh, the the observations of MPs and some have described her government as chaotic and um, most of them have described her as a money magic economist. And so um, as of yesterday when she resigned, a large chunk of the members of the House of Commons are gathering signatures to declare a vote or to pass a vote of no confidence against her. So she did the right thing and um, we saw it coming. So we have now Conservative MPs hoping to succeed uh, Ms. Truss as Prime Minister, racing mm -hmm. to find backers, you know, before the Monday deadline. What do you make of what we're hearing, the popular choices? Well, first, we need to understand what the law says. Um, so the Constitutional Convention um, in the United Kingdom is that for, for someone to be nominated a Prime Minister, you you must be someone that has the confidence of the House of Commons. So the cabinet manual provides in, um, parag provides in section 2.7 that the ability of the government to command confidence of the elected House of Commons is central to the authority to govern. And that applies to the prime minister. The person who does the nomination is the crown. That the crown can only nominate a person who has the confidence of the House of Commons. And that explains the reason why um, they are all looking for support from the House to, as a way of bolstering their, their confidence, their ability to command the confidence of the House. And so uh, at the moment, things are a little bit sketchy, but that is the reason why they are going, they are looking for support from the House of Commons. So do you think that former Prime Minister Boris Johnson has a strong, I mean, legally, he is, he can run again, um, you know, for Prime Minister, right? Um, do you think that he could succeed? Boris Johnson is a very formidable politician. He has proved the, his mettle. He has demonstrated that before this time, he has the confidence of not only the House of Commons, but also the confidence of the British people. And so those who are calling on Boris Johnson to buy again for the position of prime ministers, they have the election in mind, and it is purely driven by political interest. Um, they believe that Johnson is the man to beat in any polls at the United Kingdom. The only limitation um, against his running um, leg, from a legal perspective is the fact that he is still subject to investigation by the Ethics and uh, Privileges Committee of the House of Lords and the House of Commons. That in itself is a major problem. So the thinking of um, political purists is that if he comes in as prime minister, that in itself would defeat the investigation. And at the end of the day, the wheels of justice will run very slowly. So not being a, a law in your own court uh, in, in that, that position. But then looking at the Conservatives, uh, the Conservative MPs, do you think that they are still, um, you know, a force, they're still popular, um, you know, in Britain? And this is also considering that um, opposition Labour is calling for a national election. Well, this is um, a very tough time for the Conservative Party in, in the United Kingdom. Um, you heard Sakia Stama there describing them as a revolving door of chaos. That, that for me is very heavy. And um, the fact that they have had three prime ministers resign in, um, within short intervals in their government demonstrates the fact that the Conservative Party is still searching for the right kind of leadership. 
a right kind of leadership that will up uphold the, the values of the British public. And so I think it's um, a tough time for the, for the Conservative Party. But at the same time, I think that those calling for a general election are also driven by their own personal partisan interest. Um, the, to the, the Labour Party is calling for a general election because at the moment, um, the pools do not favor the Conservative Party. And if an election were to be conducted today, um, it will swim in the parties of defeat. And so they are all driven by their own partisan interest. So but at, the ten at the same time, I think that what we need to consider is what the law says. And going by democratic con and um, uh, going by constitutional conventions, to the extent that the Tories still command um, the, the, the majority in the House, all, they need, all the party needs to do is to throw its weight behind someone who commands the confidence of the House of Commons and then suggest that person to the um, Crown to make the appointment as Prime Minister. Because at the end of the day, it is the person who commands um, the confidence of the House of Commons that will eventually emerge as Prime Minister. I don't think there is any need, legally speaking, from a constitutional perspective for a general election. Another question to you on the subject of the opposition, Kestama, who has called on Ms. Truss to give up the yearly allowance, £115,000, that she would be entitled to as former Prime Minister. Do you think it's a matter of ethics or it's a matter of law? Well, I think it is a matter of law. Um, it is not a matter of ethics because the salaries of members of parliament is fixed by the Parliamentary Standards Act of 2009. Um, even the salaries of ministers is fixed by the Ministerial Salaries Act of 1975. So it is a question of law. And under these laws, um, there is always room to alter the salaries of these public officers. And so in so far as they are fixed by law, I think only an amendment of law will, um, would um, entitle a person, will entitle a person to those salaries or not. I don't think it is a question of um, ethics. But then we need to also realize that under the ministerial codes, prime ministers exist, they are bound by the ministerial code, and they have a duty of accountability. And so if you have not performed the functions of your office, there is absolutely no need why you, sh you would claim the monies with respect to that office. Many have described the reign of Listros as calamitous, as abominable, as economic suicide. She presented a plan without subjecting it to a regulatory impact analysis or an economic analysis. And that led to specific, um, speculations in the British economy that crashed and brought down the pound to an all time low. So for many, she has not performed the functions of, of her office. And therefore, from a moral perspective, she's not, she's not entitled to the salaries attendant to that and allowances attendant to that office. So you can make an argument for both sides. But I think it is more a matter of law than morality. I would like to thank you. Dr. Charles Aholu is a law lecturer at Nottingham Law School. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us and your thoughts on this issue. Thank you, Minister, for having me. Have a great day.